Welcome to PowerPoint Tips and Tricks from Presentation Point. So we're going to be going in and out of the presentation here. So we'll be going into PowerPoint a lot because many of the uh, tips I want to demonstrate, you really can't see on the slideshow itself. You need to be right in PowerPoint to see them. So the first one I want to talk about is learning to use the presenter view. So when you see a normal PowerPoint presentation, you see, of course, this big screen like the one in front of you of the presentation. But the presenter, if they're looking at a, pre at a presenter view on a second screen on their laptop, smartphone, whatever, uh, we'll see a second screen that shows which current slide is up, which slide is coming next, and notes on what's going to, uh, what's going to be on the slide, what you want to talk about. So this is a really powerful tool because it reminds you what your next slide is going to be, so you're not surprised when it comes up. And being able to add the notes gives you the opportunity to be able to uh, rem remind you what you wanted to say, remind you of stories, remind you of points you want to make, without having to throw a whole bunch of bullet points right on the screen. The next trick or tip I want to talk about is don't use a standardized template. Most templates out there try to give you a look that goes throughout the entire presentation. They made a company logo and all that kind of information. And it just looks boring when every slide's the same and it's uniform. So slide after slide that are all the same color with bullet points and a company logo, those are really boring. So instead, have high image, gra you know, high quality graphics on each slide, uh, you know, single point on each. And this is going to make your slideshow really pop. Wherever possible, try not to use bullets. We've all been at those death by PowerPoint presentations where someone is reading point after point aloud in a very monotonous voice and the lights are dim in the room because the projector is maybe not that bright and we all want to go to sleep because it's just that boring. So bullet points are usually not, not that great to include in this point. Now, there might be times when you do have to include some bullet points and there's ways to make them more exciting. So you can see here, the bullet point is, you can turn it into icons or smart art. And so I'll just show you really briefly how to do that. So if I go into PowerPoint here and click on the bullet points, you'll see that it gives me some options. So if I'm going to uh, right click here and choose layout, then I can choose from a wide range of different layouts that you'll see here uh, that you know all these images are changing while I'm doing it. Or I can let the, um, the design tool just suggest some for me. If I go design, design ideas, and then you'll see that it gives me some different ideas here. And, you know, I quite like that one. So this is a great way to make these, these bullet points a little bit more exciting, have a little bit, a little bit more panache. The next idea I want to talk to you about is to use the eyedropper tool. And this is a tool I use all the time and, and very few people I know use it. So what the eyedropper tool is, is if you want to change the background of an image, you just go format, right click, format background. And then you get your usual option. Do I want a solid fill, gradient fill, pattern, picture? And I'm going to go down here to where it says color. And of course, I can choose any of these colors. But eyedropper down here lets me pick a color that's going to match right here. So this works great because this lets me match exactly the color that's on the screen so that I know that my presentation colors are going to match in this case. So you can see what a difference that makes when you're able to change the screen that way. The next uh, tip is to consider embedding a video. Now the benefit of embedding a video is let's say you want to show a YouTube video or show a video of some sort with an internet connection and maybe you got really bad internet in that particular room. This is quite common I find when I'm presenting that the internet connection's not as good as I'd hoped. Or maybe the internet's down, that particular website you were going to show the video from is down. So embedding the video right in the PowerPoint gets rid, you know, gets rid of any issues there. So here's an example of an embedded video. You see if I click on it, then I can get the options. We call this video 
from Porsche to NASA, a day in our sales department. So that way you can embed your videos, put them right in, and you don't have to worry about any internet problems. Another trick is to use the Zoom feature. So what the Zoom feature is, is it lets you connect to things to be able to have them zoom out in a slide. So as an example, I've put four of the upcoming slides right on this background here. And if I click on it, you'll see it zooms in and then that comes out. So that's a great way to be able to create a little bit of a navigation, some, you know, some more excitement that's going on there. So the next tip I want to talk about is to crop your photos for more impact. So, and, and this is, you know, for when you've taken a really lovely photo, you're going to hate the fact that you're cropping away part of it. But here's an example. Now, this photo over on the left is beautiful. Look at the, gr look at the beautiful picture. Look at the, uh, you know, amazing blossoms on, I don't know if it's a cherry or a plum tree or whatever it is. This, this is a stunning photo. They've done a great job. This photo doesn't need any fixing to make it look good. But people at the back of the room, far away from this presentation, may not really be able to see what the source is about because all of this backgrounding area here which is lovely for the picture kind of you know gets the, the subject is not really the central focus so by cropping the photo as I've done on the right the subject is immediately more recognizable what they are even if you're near the back of the room PowerPoint comes with all sorts of shapes that you can, you can drag and make any size you want. So give some thought to how can I use these shapes, creating flowcharts, stars, banners, block arrows, and the like. The PowerPoint designer feature is really a great tool and I use this a lot. You can see over here it's showing a single slide and it's showing all these different potential ideas that we could do for it. And to do that you just go exit and then you just go to design and go design ideas and instantly you'll see it's giving me all these different options and if I click on any of these it will immediately change my slide to match those so it just gives you a lot you know a lot more ways to to be able to make your presentation really jump Make sure that you embed your fonts in your uh, PowerPoint slides. This is really key because if you sometimes you can't present on your own laptop where you know your font is there is right there, or you might have created your presentation on your desktop and you might have different fonts in your desktop than your laptop. Uh, and I've had cases where even though I've got the font right on my laptop, so I know it's going to display properly, for some reason they don't want to disconnect their existing laptop they want all the presentations to run off their laptop instead of my own laptop and they don't want to disconnect so therefore I have to transfer my presentation over on a USB drive or a smart or, or a uh, SD card and therefore I've lost the embed the fonts so by embedding the font with PowerPoint you're going to make sure that your fonts are going to look the way that you planned on the screen a lot of us don't realize you can uh, go into the PowerPoint options area and you can customize the, rib the ribbon, the, all the different uh, commands you have that you can work with to be the ones you use most. So if you want eyedropper, for example, to be you know, uh, right in the main ribbon, one of the main tabs, you can go ahead and add and change these, change these menus. Consider using a video background for your slide. It can liven things up. As you can see, I've thrown a fireworks background on my slide here, and this is going to add a lot more movement, uh, you know, things going on that way. So, When you need to make a change to a bunch of slides, uh, most of us forget to use the Slide Master option up here. So the Slide Master option allows you to edit the master slides of each type to have a certain format and this can include fonts, how the bullet points are laid out, uh, footers, numbering, anything that you might want. You can edit that in the master slides and then that will populate out automatically to all of your other slides. One of the fastest ways to access things is by keyboard shortcuts in any program and people forget in PowerPoint because it's such a graphic visual interface, you're, people often forget that you've got shortcuts for these things that can be a lot faster. 
So some of the standard, you know, shortcuts, control C and control V, most of us know these, they're just copy and paste. But control D is like a fast way, it it's copy and paste together, it duplicates, um, you know, an object on the screen or, or a series of objects on the screen. And of course, remember undo and redo, and control M will give you a way to put in a new slide. Control shift tab, I use this one a fair bit, lets you toggle from the outline view in the thumbnail pane, and I work in the outline view a lot. Shift F9 shows or hides a grid on the, you know, on the page you're working on. Uh, control shift and then the right arrow increases font and then the left arrow, same thing, will decrease font. You can run a presentation from anywhere within the system by F5. Uh, hitting the B button makes your screen go black during the show, and the W button makes the screen go white during the show. So these are all really useful. There's tons more. I, I just included some of the common ones I use, but there's a lot more. Remember, PowerPoint can also create PDFs. So I often use PowerPoint to create proposals or handouts for presentations where uh, I find that you know it's a lot of extra work to have to do it in Microsoft Word to make it really pretty, whereas PowerPoint is so easy to work with graphically. So I often do my proposals directly in PowerPoint, then just export them as a PDF. Speaking of exporting, you can also export your PowerPoint to video. If you've done voiceovers, it'll even include the voice. And it makes it really easy to be able to create uh, video quickly from PowerPoints and the video can be exported in MPEG-4 format or WMV format and uh, can be re any resolution you want including high definition or even ultra high definition which is 4K. You can also turn PowerPoint into digital signage and we have a lot of uh, add-on tools for that at the presentationpoint.com website but many of our clients are using PowerPoint as their digital signage, uh, they're using PowerPoint uh, you know, all, all over their facilities to be able to communicate with their customers so it's important to remember that PowerPoint doesn't have to be just presentations, it can be ongoing, it can be uh, happening all the time in your in your facility they can be presentations that are running continuously and you can connect your PowerPoint to real-time data our data point add-on lets you connect to in real time to over 25 different data sources this is an example of Sotheby's auction where they've connected a PowerPoint to a live access database showing the bids in real time and converting them to multiple currencies and don't forget your smartphone. You can be a smartphone presenter as well. Microsoft Office Remote will let you control PowerPoint from your phone. I think it only works on the uh, Windows Pro feature, unfortunately, not the Windows Home version. But if you're running Windows Pro, then you can control PowerPoint right from your phone. Or you can stream your phone presentation right onto a larger screen, which would be a, a very quick and dirty way, you know, quick, fast way to be able to do an impromptu or a very quick presentation. Hope you've enjoyed these tips and tricks. Let us know your own tips and tricks uh, in the comments below. And if you want more PowerPoint help and add-ons, please visit us at presentationpoint.com.